Welcome to another episode of This Week in Rails. I'm Dave Kimura, and today we have Emmanuel bringing us the updates. Again, This Week in Rails is a publication that I do not create. I simply provide the video coverage of it. So let's dive right in. For the first item, don't trigger after commit destroy callback again on destroy if record previously was destroyed. And we need to check out the pull request for this one because it is a mouthful and it makes a lot more sense. Or now, if you find a record and if you destroy it, the callback will get triggered. However, in the case where you try to destroy it again, the callback won't be triggered again for a second time. Currently, the way it works, because this was created in December of 2016 when it got merged in, if you find a record, and if you look up another record, the same one, and you try to destroy the first object, and you try to destroy the object again, the callbacks will get triggered multiple times. However, on the other object, which is still the same record, if you try to destroy it, it won't trigger the callback. And as a side note, I think we should be careful on how we use callbacks anyways, but if you are using them, just be careful and know their intended functions and try not to overuse them within your application. And then we have the allow error reporter to handle several error classes. And this is going to be really cool because we can then do something like rails.error.handle and we can pass in multiple types for them to be handled. So whatever work you do, you don't have to copy out that code multiple times, now can all be handled within the one block. And this is a feature that I do need to cover as a episode on itself because I think that this could be really powerful and just how we handle the error exceptions. Next, fix ciphertext for for yet to be encrypted values. And this one was a little confusing at first because I've never ran into this issue. However, if we look at it, so the way this is currently working, if you encrypt an attribute, you can then call the post.create, passing in the body hello. That hello will then get encrypted. So if you call the ciphertext for body, you then get the encrypted output. However, if you just call the post.body is equal to world, and before you save the record, you then try to call the ciphertext for body, then you're going to get the plain text output. And I don't know how often this is really going to be a issue, but it is good to see that we are now getting a consistent functionality across the board. However, now the expected behavior is if you encrypt a record, then it'll get encrypted, or if you're just changing the record's value and then you get the ciphertext for, then it's also going to return the encrypted value. And the next one's pretty cool because we may get additional performance out of our Rails applications with the avoid unnecessary serialized calls after save. So this commit memoizes value for database so that serialize is not called a second time after save. So I really appreciate the back and forth that goes on with these pull requests because if we look at this one, there's some questions about what's going to happen around the encrypted attributes and the conversation goes on and then Jonathan Hefner creates a pull request which should address his concerns. And so overall, I think that it's really awesome on how the Rails team and all the contributors are helping make the framework better. And it's not something where they are just approving things left and right, that there is real thought and consideration that goes into each one of the pull requests and the code reviews around them. Next, allow the active record query methods reselect to accept a hash. And so there was a pull request on the select method on query methods to accept hashes. And so now we also have that ability on the reselect as well. And I didn't even know that this reselect even existed, but it's really cool where you have a post.select if you just want the title and body. But then later you realize that you also need to get the created at column. So essentially it's allowing you to change the previous select statement. So that's pretty cool. And for the past week, there were 21 contributors who helped improve the Rails framework. So again, I thank each and every one for all their contributions. And it looks like we got some more first time contributors. So I really appreciate all the work that they have done to help make Rails a better framework. And so if you'd like to receive your own copy of This Week in Rails, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails to receive your own email version of it. And so that wraps up this week's video coverage of This Week in Rails. Thanks for watching.